Hey guys, I have here two different lithium iron phosphate rack mount batteries. This is the 48 volt 100 amp hour from SOK. This is the 48 volt 100 amp hour from Jacoper. Now, if you're like me, you probably noticed right away that these batteries look the same. They are near identical. So why is that? What are the differences? Are they manufactured by the same company? Now, keeping openness and transparency in mind, the SOK was sponsored for a past project. The Jacoper battery I purchased approximately one month ago. So taking a closer look at these batteries, they are identical in almost every way. We have the same pair of positive and negative terminals. They are the same exact terminals. We have the same exact circuit breaker, Chint CB-125A. Uh, obviously the brand names are different. We have the same uh, BMS items protruding the enclosure. I don't know if that means they are the same BMS or not. We'll take a look at that. The same screen, the same buttons. One thing that's different is that the Jacoper battery has a power on off button. The SOK does not have that. I also noticed that the serial number stickers are near identical. Obviously the serial numbers are different and reflective of each individual battery, but the sticker itself looks exactly the same. The formatting and the labeling is the same as well. And here's just a closer look at that. Here's the Jacoper serial number sticker. And then we have the SOK serial number sticker. Each battery also came with an inspection report that looks near identical. There is a bit different spacing between the battery inspection report header. On this side, there's less spacing below it as opposed to the right hand side. But overall, the columns are the same. The items are mostly the same. We have the same type of tests. Uh, the factory voltage range is slightly different. So the test numbers are respective of each individual company. However, the styling template is pretty much the same. And we have what appears to be the same exact passing stamp for QC quality control and even the word pass that's written over top of the stamp on each of them. The same date and signature type information here. Now obviously I don't know Chinese characters but these do not appear to be the same inspection person. But yeah, I can't really tell too much on that other than there's a striking resemblance between the two papers. Here are the rack mount ears for each of the battery. The black one is from Jacoper. Uh, the right one is from SOK. There's a bit different texture to them. Uh, SOK does powder coat their enclosures. Jacoper just says steel. I'm not sure if it's painted or if it's a different type of powder coating. But if you hold these back to back here, you can see the rack mount holes are cut exactly the same. They are oval style patterns. And then we have the three holes that affix to the case are exactly lined up. Now, how do these batteries compare on the inside? So we take the Jacoper cover off. Uh, it's just a steel cover. There's nothing on the inside of this cover. Uh, we have a layer of epoxy, is it epoxy resin board, epoxy board on the inside of the SOK cover to add some extra insulation. So looking inside the batteries here, right away I can see the Jacoper has these two metal bars going across the top of the cells. And that's likely why they don't have the insulation on the lid because these bars would prevent these cells from ever coming in contact with that lid even if the battery were to be crushed from the top. They also have these metal bars going across the top now that I think about it which would also prevent that lid from coming down in contact with this battery. So I guess the epoxy board in the SOK is just an added level of protection that the Jacoper battery does not have. So one key difference I noted on the SOK battery is that the positive and negative exit the left side. On the Jacoper, the positive and negative exit the lower left side. So the cells are oriented in a different fashion. I've also noted that between each individual cell, the SOK has plastic spacers. Uh, the Jacoper is using foam, and the foam does appear to be between every single cell. On the Jacoper, I noticed the temperature sensors are glued and taped down to the cell. On the SOK, the temperature sensors are screwed down to the uh, support brackets that go horizontally across the battery. Another difference I noted is that on the Jacoper battery, the balance leads are routed up the right-hand side, and they are bundled neatly in spiral wrap, whereas SOK routed theirs up the side, and there's just kind of like a squirrel's nest of wires here. Now, I did note this in a past video, and they have since told me that they are uh, reducing the length of these wires so it's not as much of a spaghetti nest. And uh, you can see the sharp bend in the negative wires here on the SOK. I did inform them of this, and they told me they were fixing this a few months ago. Um, I haven't checked any recent batteries to see if they uh, have actually done that or not. But interestingly enough, we see that exact same bending on the Jacoper battery here. Uh, so what it looks like happened is the person who was tightening these bolts down just, you know, didn't hold the ring terminal while they tightened and allowed the terminal to rotate with the bolt itself. All right, so we're going to take apart the front of each battery here and just take a look at the BMS inside. Okay. So the Jacoper does have a little less room to work. 
Now that I have these apart, I am going to disconnect the main negative, positive, and the balance leads of the BMS just so we can safely work on this because, because this is 48 volts and you can actually get shocked on 48 volts. So I want to make this as safe as possible. All right, that was on there pretty good. Let's try the other one. Yep, that's on there pretty good as well on the SOK here. I'd say that's about the same amount of tightness on the jack burr. Of course, this is not a torque wrench, so that's uh, a very subjective measurement. All right, so these BMSs are near identical, but not quite. So I did notice here that on the jack per battery, it says PACE SST22. If we go up to the SOK battery here, it says PACE SST21. Then it also says revision 1.1 over here. And we see the same revision 1.1 here. However, part of the text is covered up by this glob of glue and there is a resistor under there. So I don't want to try to scrape it off. It does appear the Jacobur BMS is a slightly newer revision. They both say 1.1. So I don't know if that first number is a revision or a model number. However, what I find most interesting with that as well is that this barcode sticker here has a very long uh, part number on it. And that part number matches identically the part number at the top of the QR code here. I know it's too small to make out in the video. Now I did take note to the Jacobur, which has this push button switch, goes down and it actually goes underneath here. You can see where it's connected. It's that connector right there. The SOK has that same connector, but it is empty. So I'm guessing they have that feature disabled in the software. And here you can see the circuit breakers are exactly the same as well on the back side. We have identical mounts. Again, one's powder coated, one is not. We have the same pair of seven gauge silicone insulated wires going into each. This one's obviously a bit longer, uh, but the termination ferrules are the same on both. And just looking down from the top, I don't really see anything else to note as a difference either. They are pretty much identical. All right, so we've got the jack per batteries here. The cells are held in with this metal strap in the front, uh, this long metal plate, and it does have padding on one side. And then once you remove that, you can easily access all of these cells, at least in the front row here. Uh, the SOK battery is built in these steel enclosures. So these steel enclosures slip back into the chassis there. So that is quite a bit of extra steel reinforcement, just holding these cells together and holding them in place here. All right, so it was significantly easier to remove a cell from the Jacoper battery. All I had to do was unbolt this and lift it up, and then I can slide my cell straight out. For this assembly here, I had to cut all the zip ties the whole way back this center rail remove three screws on each side, lift this up just enough that I can shimmy out one of those cells. Now this would be significantly easier had I removed all of these balance leads, but I didn't feel like taking all those screws off. So part of that is my fault. This is the cell from the jack per battery. You can see one side is bare. The other side has two strips of adhesive foam. This is probably neoprene foam. It looks very similar uh, to the type of foam that I used in my DIY lithium iron phosphate build. Then over here we have the SOK cell, and you can see these plastic separators that go between them. Just a little bit of space here to keep them apart and lined up correctly. And you've got the end plate on the side. The end plate is a little bit more rigid. Uh, rigidness doesn't really matter with these considering it's in a steel frame. Looking at the QR code, they are both GFB 3.2 volt 100 amp hour. See the same exact QR code there. These do have slightly different textures on the top. This one is a bit more uh, I don't know, glossy like, and this one's a bit more matte. It's more flatter. Um, and the corners are not peeled up. However, they're also not held down super tight. I mean, I guess that one is there. You can see the plastic is pulled up a little bit over here versus over here. Actually, let's pull these the whole way off and see what's under them. Uh, the tops of the cells look near identical. Uh, I don't see any distinguishing characteristics whatsoever. Um, they both appear to be exactly the same. So we're good there in that regard. So one thing I noted as well is that these bus bars used in both of them are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, but basically they are many layers of copper with a layer of nickel on the top and the bottom. And because of the many layers, they're actually flexible. So if your cells were to expand either, you know, from several years of wear and tear, or if there were a failure to occur, these bus bars could in theory bend to absorb the force of the uh, cell bloating from putting pressure on these terminals. All right, now I reached out to each company individually from an email address they wouldn't recognize. And I told them I was looking at their battery. I noticed it looked like the opposing company's battery. 
and if they could tell me, you know, if they're being manufactured by the same company or what the deal was. SOK responded and said they were the original manufacturer of this battery and that there are approximately eight other copies of it out there. The Jacoper is the only one I'm aware of that looks like the SOK. Jacoper responded and said their first 48 volt battery was in June 2021, and that was the old Jacoper battery that I had reviewed previously on this channel. Uh, they then said that they had listened to customer feedback and comments and incorporated that into their new design, and this is now the Jacoper Pro. Now, obviously, neither company is manufacturing these individual components. You know, Jacoper is not making cells, SOK is not manufacturing the enclosure. So, the way I'm thinking this works is these companies decide they want to build a battery and they go out on the market and see these are the cases available or they may design a case for themselves. They're essentially buying all the parts from third parties. So all one company has to do is go out and find where the other company is sourcing their components and source those same components. Uh, now there are things that are unique between them like the cases are similar but not exact. So you know in the event SOK had this design specifically for them it doesn't take much for Jacoper to go to the same company and say hey I want one of those with these additional changes. Am I saying that's what happened? No, but you know, I have my own personal opinion and I do believe that SOK was the first one with this battery. Of course, I have no proof or evidence of that. I was aware that SOK was bringing this battery to market before it was announced. And I did receive a few pictures of the battery from Current Connected and, and I was told from Current Connected that the flexible bus bars on these cells was inspired by the video I had done prior. So I guess you guys can be the judge of which one you think came first. Unfortunately, unless you actually Go to China and see these things being made and see where they're being made and how they're being made. SOK recently received a UL1743, is it 1743 I think, uh, certification for their battery and that testing was done by ETL Intertech. So that's going to come into play if the system you're building out requires permitting and you have to have official inspections done. They will likely want to see UL listed equipment. So Current Connected did tell me that no changes were required for that certification. So if you're like me and you have a battery from before that certification was completed, you can contact Current Connected and they will actually ship you out stickers to apply to your battery. So I reviewed both companies' warranty policies and reached out to both companies for a comment. Jacoper seemed a little bit more interested in selling me a battery rather than answering my warranty questions. They eventually told me that they have three U.S. warehouses where they would ship parts from whether it be you know, BMSs or whatever the problem may be, that the customer would then make the repairs themselves after an initial remote troubleshooting. So if the problem was not fixed through remote troubleshooting, then they would proceed with shipping components to repair the battery. The customer would have to complete those repairs. They don't have any you know, repair centers anywhere in the United States. SOK, on the other hand, Current Connected is an authorized SOK distributor. Current Connected is also an SOK repair facility. So both of these batteries do have a 10-year warranty. The SOK battery, uh, years one through seven, is handled by SOK, but it would still be uh, facilitated through Current Connected, and then Current Connected extends that for years uh, eight, nine, and 10. So Current Connected explained that the first step would be remote troubleshooting, just like the Jacoper. Second step would be to ship out parts if the customer is comfortable making the repair. If the customer is not comfortable making the repair themselves, they could ship the battery back to Current Connected. And to quote the words that Dexter said specifically, it's a no BS policy. And that's what I like to see and what I like to hear. I've heard nothing negative at all about Current Connected's customer support. If anything, I've heard it's been very, very helpful. In the beginning, when I reviewed the first Jack per battery, the customer support was not the greatest. And however, that seems to have since been significantly improved. So I know they do have another support person, at least one responding to inquiries. And uh, the times I've reached out to them, I've gotten very quick answers and they seem very knowledgeable at this point. So the last thing to touch on is pricing and I sort of have a cheat sheet here because I've got a lot of numbers I've calculated out. For the pricing calculations and comparisons, I used my own zip code here in the Northeast United States. That way we have a fair playing field for both companies. So if you're purchasing one jack per battery, it will cost $1,939 delivered to the door. If you purchase one SOK battery, it will cost $1,999 delivered to the door. Uh, so the SOK is $60 more expensive. Now both of these companies sell the same five tier rack. So if you were to purchase five batteries with the rack, the cost changes a little bit. Uh, for a rack of jack per batteries, you'd be looking at $8,886 or $1,777 per battery. For the SOK rack setup, you'd be looking at $9,280 and that comes out to $1,856 per battery. So that's a total of $394 more. So is it worth the extra $394 for a rack of SOKs compared to a rack of Jacobers? In my opinion, when you're spending that much money, the fact that it has a UL certification with ETL 
In addition to being a US company where you can get US support, US repairs, I think that carries an immense amount of value and I personally would probably pay the extra money for the SOK. That being said, these batteries are very, very well built and I think either one of them will last you a long time. I don't expect you'll have any problems with either the SOK or the Jacoper. So if you made it this far listening to the ramble, please hit that like button before you go. Any questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thanks for watching.